Hello ladies and gentlemen. This is Michael Montero. And welcome to my segment of The Art of Creative Thinking by John Adair. Chapter 3. And before I get into it today, I want to give some shout outs to the people who dress me, you know? And um, when it comes to my outfits, this is the guy who is responsible for dressing me. It's called Gym Collection, where fashion is unique as you are. This gym collection, they're just here at Kimari Street, Kimari House, Grand Fro. Facebook, Instagram, gym collection, and the number is still there. You can give them a shout out and go see what they're having. When it comes to my kicks, my shoes, you know, I love shoes. I can buy shoes worth 100,000, 200,000 because I have histories with shoes. And this is um, a good Nike. It's a nice Nike. This one came from Japan Collection. Here it says, go for it. I exercise, I'm healthy, I'm happy. This is a good shoe. Check out Japan Collection. Or oh, inbox me for the numbers, you know? Check them out. If you don't like bothering people, you know? <laughs> so back to our business. Chapter three. And our first headline says, Make the strange familiar and the familiar strange. Discovery consists of seeing what everyone has seen and thinking what nobody has thought. Okay? Ah. When primitive natives in New Guinea saw an aircraft, for the first time, they called it the Big Bird. Birds were familiar to them. Their first steps toward comprehending something totally strange or unfamiliar to them was to assume it was an unusual example of something already known to them. We assimilate the strange and familiar by comparing it consciously or unconsciously to what it it is to what is familiar to us. We further experience the native doubtless, discover that in some respect aircraft are like birds, and in some respect they are not. In other words, following the big bird's hypothesis, noticing the point where it begins to break down, it is a useful way of exploring and beginning to understand a new phenomenon. Therefore, you should use analogy to explore and understand what seems to be strange. Not so long ago, I conducted a seminar on leadership for heads of universities' departments, leadership and management, and the difference between them were quite new concepts for many of the participants. One of them, a professor of chemistry, used the familiar to understand the unfamiliar in this way. Quotation. In chemistry, a reaction between two compounds that can react in often, that can react is often put down in notation as follows. A plus B equals AB. Many reactions proceed slowly, if at all without a catalyst. This, to my mind, is the role of readership in getting a job done. To catalyze the process, 
there are various ways in which the analogy could be amplified but if you consider a rough equation of problem equals solution management will realize the solution in many instances but leadership will usually catalyze it there is a little magic involved creative thinking often involves a leap in the dark okay you are looking for something new by definition if it is really novel neither you nor anyone else will have had the, that idea often you can get fair in one jump often you cannot get fair in one jump to, to, to some of us who think you can get there like immediately or instantly you know things don't work like that this is the process it's like a rider you know and remember let me add this when you're climbing that ladder the more you stay in one point the more the others start becoming weaker <laughs> okay Um, if you can hit upon an analogy of what the unknown idea may be like, you are halfway there. The reverse process, making the familiar strange, is equally useful to the creative thinkers. Familiarity breeds comfort, conformity. Because things, ideas, or people are familiar. Because, because things, ideas, or people are familiar, we stop thinking about them. As Seneca said, familiarity reduces the greatness of things. Familiarity reduces the greatness, the greatness of things. Seeing them as strange, odd, problematic, unsatisfactory or only half known restarts the engines of our mind remember the saying that god hides things from us by putting them near to us i repeat remember the saying that god hides things from us by putting them near to us as an exercise in warming up you are latent power of creative thinking you can do no better than to apply these principles of making familiar strange take some take something that you frequently see or experience or perhaps an everyday occurrence like the sun rising or the rain falling set aside half an hour with some paper and pen or pencil. Reflect or meditate on the object, concentrating on what you do not know about it. Okay? Meditate about that sun, about the things you don't know, the moon, the rain, you know? And try to find the truth in things that are unfamiliar to, to you. A member of your family or a friend makes good subject for this exercise. When we say we know someone, we usually mean that we have a hazy notion of their likes and dislikes. Together with the rough idea of their personality or temperament, we believe we can predict more or less accurately how the person will react. We think we know them. We think we know when relative when our relative or friend is deviating from their normal behavior but take yourself as an analogy does anyone know everything about you could you in all honesty say that you fully know yourself we do not know people their concerns the loves and hates their thoughts, said the novelist, 
Irish Murdoch. In a recent television interview, for me, the people I see around me every day are more extraordinary than any characters in my books. <laughs> the implication is that below the surface of familiarity, there is a wonderful unknown world to be explored. Wow. Wow. The more I get deep in this book, the more my coffee tastes better. Let's get to the key points of chapter 3. The process of understanding anything or anyone unfamiliar, foreign, unnatural, unaccountable, what is not already known, had or seen, is best begun by relating it by analogy to what we know already. But it should not end there. The reverse process of making familiar strange is equally important creative thinking. We do not think about what we know. Here, artists can help us to become aware of the new within the old. No man really knows about other human beings, wrote John Steinbach. The best he can do is to suppose that they are like himself. <laughs> I'm gonna repeat the last points. No man really knows about other human beings, wrote John Steinbach. The best he can do is to suppose that they are like himself. If you take another person or if we treat other people like we want to be treated, you know, assume I'm treating you like the way I treat Montero or the way I treat Michael or the way I treat things that I, are so dear to us, you're going to have an amazing world. And that, has, that brings us to the end of chapter 3. We meet to chapter 4, which says, travel to stimulate your mind. Let's travel, let's travel, let's travel. And see you next time. Take care of yourself. It's been a minute. I can't say thank you enough for those who tune into our channel, those who subscribe, those who like, those who comment. And remember to share with friends and family. Because it's all about the art of creative thinking through giving. What we think is helpful to those we hold dear to us. This is Michael Montero. Until next time, I'm going to wrap my baggage and my courage to save it for next time. It's been a minute. Peace, Africa.